Melinda celebrating our 25th anniversary. Sponsored by Teamsters Local 1932. Protecting the future of working families. Teamsters1932.org. Everybody. Welcome to the Real Men of Real Estate radio talk show. I'm your host, Rusty Tweed. We're going to be airing every Sunday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time. You can hear us on KCAA Broadcasting Network, 1050 AM and 106.5 FM affiliated with CNBC, NBC News, and NBC Sports. You can also listen in on iHeartRadio, Pandora, Amazon Music, and many of your favorite streaming channels. If you want to watch our previous shows, you can go to Roku TV, Amazon Firefly TV, and Android app by subscribing to Building Solid Foundations channel. In addition to that, my company, TFS Properties, has its own YouTube channel where you can go on and also see these episodes. In addition, we have a lot of other videos, educational uh, for you, having to do with different aspects of real estate. Everything from what parts of the country to invest in, what types of properties are available to invest in, and also 1031 exchanges. Probably the thing that's the biggest issue right now, and again, it's January 2024, happens to be interest rates. Now, for many, many years, we had very, very low interest rates, but they've gone up dramatically over the last year. So how is that affecting things and what's gonna happen down the road? But before I get into that, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my background and my experience. I actually bought my first property over 40 years ago when I was 21, and that was an income property where I collected the rent off of it. And so from there, I went on back in 1990 when we had the savings loans crisis. I actually did a lot of buy clo- uh, buying of foreclosures, so I got very experienced in that. In fact, I probably did over 40 fix and flip properties that were foreclosures. And so I went through that whole uh, scenario and actually learned a lot about how to negotiate with banks, how to negotiate with sellers, uh, how to put deals together, in-depth experience. Like I said, I did over 40 properties back then. and. I've run into pretty much any kind of situation you can think of. <laughs> uh, scroll forward, and, and I was a broker then, later. And when I was brokering, I, I learned about 1031 exchanges. Now, the 1031 exchange world is very, very fascinating. It's an area that I've really taken on and, and really created a big niche on it. The whole concept of a 1031 exchange is that you sell a property, and if you follow all the rules, you go into a new property and you don't pay any taxes. Well, I've worked with people that literally have built up tens of millions of dollars of wealth in real estate and paid little, if any, taxes. And again, it was all by the use of the 1031 exchange. And again, you know, as we go forward in these segments, we're actually going to be doing one segment specifically on uh, 1031 exchanges and really taking a deep dive. And again, if you want to go onto our YouTube channel, there's there's, uh, information there as well. But I really firmly believe that if your goal is to invest in real estate and, and build wealth, you have to understand the 1031 exchange process and how to use it to your advantage. And it gives you all kinds of different avenues. For example, you know, there's maybe a property that has a lot of uh, equity in it, but the income isn't that great. You know, the rents just aren't that great when you take a look at the value of the property. Well, that's a property you could sell, do a 1031 exchange, maybe some other market. You can go into some other part of the country where you're going to get much, much higher cash flow, which is something that we routinely do with our uh, clients. Uh, It also allows you to diversify. I'm dealing with a lot of people that have a huge amount of their portfolio here in Southern California, and they're kind of looking at what's going on here with the tenant laws and things like that. And they've kind of decided, you know what, maybe I should lighten my my portfolio in Southern California and move some of that equity into other parts of the country where I feel that there's more upside and there's just a different environment for my portfolio. So again, we we deal a lot with that. When you look at uh, what we call cap rates in other markets. Um, here in California, you're probably seeing four or five percent cap rate. When you talk about a cap rate, it's really a calculation of how much income you're getting on the value of your building. If you bought a property, say, for a million dollars, and you're getting fifty thousand dollars of income after all your expenses, that would give us fifty thousand dollars of income on a million dollar property. 
that comes out to a 5% cap rate. Now, when you look at other parts of the country, 5% is actually very low. There's a lot of parts in the country where we can get 7, 8, sometimes 10% cap rates. So again, you take somebody that's built up a lot of equity because property values have gone up so dramatically here in California. They're only getting 4% return as far as the rent goes. They take the equity in this building in California, move that into, say, Texas or Florida or some of the other markets we deal in. Now they're getting double their income. They literally go from 4% to, say, 8%. And again, we do that routinely with our clients, and it works really, really well. Also, it allows them to go into different parts of the country just for diversification purposes. And it also allows you to go from one type of property to another. For example, you may have an apartment building, a 10 unit here in California. You decide to sell that, you have enough equity, you could buy, say, a triple net lease property, which could be something like a Popeyes or Chick-fil-A or some kind of uh, what we call credit tenant in a triple net lease property in Indiana or Oklahoma, some other market. And uh, that's a, a property where you have very little, if any, management on it. So we've done a lot of those over the years. Uh, it also allows you to go into what we uh, uh, inventory that we have available of manufactured homes. Uh, manufactured homes kind of has its own niche. And that's an area that we've been working for five or six years now. And we're managing to get a 10% cash flow to investors from manufactured homes, mainly in Texas and Louisiana. And again, that's a whole different market that actually the vast majority of people I'm dealing with had no idea how that works until we came to play. So we've actually come up with some really great strategies on how to invest in, in individual manufactured homes. We've also done parks for clients. I personally own a couple of parks myself. So again, it's an area that, that we've got a lot of experience in and we can steer clients into some other asset that they're not, not familiar with originally. And again, a, a lot of the clients we're dealing with, they have enough equity in their property here in California that when they go into these other, other markets, they can split their money up and they can buy another triple net lease property plus some single family homes that have high rents. And they can also buy manufactured homes and put together a whole portfolio of, of you know, 10 or 15 properties. Now, when we talk about 1031 exchanges, and again, we're going to be doing a much deeper dive on this in another episode. But just to give you a quick overview, when you sell your property, you have to have an accommodator set up. And that's where the money goes from your escrow. And then you have 45 days to pick the properties that you want to buy and identify them for the IRS. And then after that 45 days, you have an additional 135 days to actually close escrow. So that's a time frame and a area that, that myself and my staff are very, very experienced in. I've literally done well over a billion dollars of transactions for clients as 1031 exchanges. And uh, so my staff and myself are very, very well trained and versed in all the ins and outs and how to, how to follow through with that transaction and make sure that it actually works. Because <laughs> there's, there's some pitfalls if you're not really uh, watching what you do. Anyway, so we, we walk you through the 1031 exchange process. When it comes to picking properties, there's two major rules to follow. One is the three property rule. Now the three property rule says that you're, you're allowed to pick three properties to replace the property that you're selling. And the IRS doesn't care which of the three properties you close on. You close on one of them, you could close on all three. It doesn't matter. As long as the value of the properties that you purchase are equal to or greater than the value of the properties that you sell. So again, we can help you put all that together. But there's another rule that we use, and actually I don't see other brokers use very often at all, but we use it for most of our transactions, and that's the 200% rule. Now, what does that mean? That means that you can buy as many properties as you want on the 1031, as long as you don't go over 200% of the value of the property that you're selling. So for example, if you sold a property for a million dollars, you could identify and purchase up to $2 million worth of property, and the IRS doesn't care if you buy one or you buy 20. And so again, we put together portfolios for clients where we do manufactured homes, single family homes, triple net lease properties. And sometimes we do 10, 12, 15, up to 20 properties in a portfolio. And we can do that quite easily using this 200% rule. So again, that's, that's a particular strategy using the 1031 that I, truthfully, I don't run into very many other brokers or people that, that use it the way we do but it's really worked to our advantage with our clients. Pretty standardly, we take our clients and, and double, sometimes triple their income. I mean, there's one example I can give you, a property we did 
a little over a year ago, was actually two triplexes that a client of ours owned in the mid Wilshire district. Uh, we listed and sold those properties, got great prices for it. We took those properties and ended up buying some single family homes in Texas. We bought some manufactured homes in Texas, and we also bought a triple net lease property, which was an Arby's in uh, Indiana. And by doing that, we took the person's income from $88,000 a year net to over $150,000 a year net, which was just about double their income. So that's the kind of things that we do for clients. We do it routinely. I've got a great staff to help put all these things together. Not only that, which is kind of a little secret I have, is I have access to properties off market that, that nobody else has. And how have I done that? Well, that's my secret sauce. <laughs> but I've developed relationships by being in this business for well over 20 years. And by doing that, I've got individuals and even funds that have large portfolios of properties. And they will give me a list of properties that they want to sell. They don't want to market them on the regular market for whatever reason. So again, myself and my investors have access to these. And so we can easily put portfolios together without getting into bidding wars and getting into a whole uh, protracted deal with trying to do diligence on properties. Because again, when we get these properties, they're going to have the due diligence already. So that is a, a big part of my business. Probably 70% of all the transactions I'm involved in have to do with the 1031 exchange. And again, we're, we're tapping into these off-market portfolios that we can put together and use for our clients. So with all that in mind, we're actually going to take a break. So again, it's Rusty Tweed. This is the Real Men of Real Estate Radio Talk Show. And stay tuned because we're going to have some great tidbits for you after our sponsor. Tired of qualifying your leads and not getting the right clients for you? Join the finest women in real estate and learn how to attract the best clients and increase your referral network. Call now at 951-378-5316. 951-378-5316. Then become one of the finest women in real estate. This is Steve Matley. Join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio Talk Show. I spent decades as a professional construction manager, business owner, real estate developer, and a college educator, and I enjoy learning new things from other people. We talk a lot about real estate business and finance, but we cover a diverse range of other topics as well. Some of the topics we've discussed in the past few months include real estate investing, leadership, higher education, ADUs, marketing using technology, multifamily rental property, business strategy, entrepreneurship. You never know who may show up or what they may talk about. So join us right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio. Hey guys, it's Damon, Mr. Foxy, Damon Hart, and I'm here with the Real Men of Real Estate. And I just want to say, hey, come and watch us this Sunday, 1 p.m., live, every Sunday, okay? We're going to be on KCAA Radio. 1050 AM, 106.5 FM. If you got a minute, just tune in. We can't wait to have you here. I'm going to be there. If you can't make it on there, we're going to be at Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, or Android app on Building Solid Foundations channel. So tune in. But you know what you got to do in the meantime. Keep it foxy. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. FireUp Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including, inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Real Men of Real Estate Radio Talk Show. Now, we're going to be talking about some uh, interesting aspects having to do with today's current market. And again, right now it's January 2024. And as we all know, interest rates have actually gone up a lot. Now, let's talk about this for a while and how these interest rates are affecting things. First of all, we should kind of go back in time. And we all know that we had uh, 2008 
And when 2008 happened, it was a shock. I went through it. I had a lot of investors I was working with and, and uh, other brokers that were friends of mine. And uh, it was, to be frank, not fun at all. <laughs> but there were some lessons to be learned. So we really got to take a look at that and think how that's going to affect things down the road. Well, first of all, if we go back into the early 2000s, there was a lot of loans going on that probably shouldn't have happened. Now, for those of you that have watched the show, um, The Big Short, or read the book as I have, I highly recommend that you go back and review that. And if you haven't seen it or read it, you should do it. It's by Michael Lewis. I recently rewatched it myself while I was on a plane because I just thought it'd be good to refresh my memory. But it's pretty interesting to look at what happened then and compare it to what's going on today. So again, back in like 2004, 2005, it was really, really, really easy to get a loan. It was too easy. And so a lot of people were getting loans, what we call um, low qualification loans, they really weren't qualified in the first place. Uh, in fact, a lot of people fudged numbers on their income. We had what we called liar loans. I was not involved in those, okay? <laughs> I was doing commercial real estate at the time, and so I really wasn't aware of what was going on with uh, the single family home market, not at all. It wasn't a market that I was dealing with. You know, we were busy doing office buildings and commercial buildings and all that kind of stuff, and it was a whole different market for that. But again, for the regular real estate, you know, regular single family home market, People were buying properties with little or no money down. I even heard of people buying where they got money back when they bought a property. So that was pretty ridiculous uh, and it was too much. And, now, and then also the developers, you know, the builders of uh, condos and subdivisions, et cetera, they saw what was going on as far as how easy it was to sell. So they jumped in with both feet and a lot of projects were built. And uh, to be frank, there's a lot of overbuilding because it was so easy for people to get a loan and buy. Not only that, a lot of people that normally would have bought one property because it was so easy to get a loan, they went and bought four or five properties. And, and the market was just overheated and there was way too much inventory for the number of people that were actually gonna live in them. For those of you, for example, Vegas. I mean, Vegas was so overbuilt, property values dropped literally 50 and 60%. There was so much inventory. Uh, same thing happened in the Inland Empire here in Southern California. Property values literally dropped 60%. I mean, think about it. You bought a property for, say, $300,000, and uh, after 2008, when things dropped, that same property was only worth $100,000. Literally dropped two-thirds in price. That happened a lot. And the reason was, it was just way overbuilt. And then not only that, the banks kind of went from one end of the spectrum to the other. So you went from one end where it was super easy to get a loan, anybody could walk in just about and, and qualify, to the point where the banks just froze. And I remember very clearly in September of 2008 where we had a, a freeze in the credit markets. And what that means is the banks just stopped giving loans. You know, the Federal Reserve closed the door in, on lending and banks just froze. And that just plummeted the market. Because think about it, all these people that wanted to buy a property couldn't get a loan, even if they were qualified. And so the number of buyers just dried up. There was probably a good four or five year period after that where the market was just very dead. I mean, terrible. <laughs> In fact, one statistic I remember clearly was the, the amount of transactions from prior to 2008 to after 2008 dropped by 90%. That means in a year like 2007, there's maybe 10 transactions in real estate. In 2009, there was only one, a drop in 90%. So that was pretty brutal, and that really affected things a lot. Now scroll forward to, you know, in the last five to 10 years, well, a couple things happened. When the, when the uh, after the crash, Federal Reserve dropped interest rates dramatically in order to get people back in the market, and we saw interest rates go down to about in the twos. In fact. I know the mortgage in our house uh, was about 2.8%. None of us have seen interest rates that low, that low in our lifetime. So that really brought a lot of buyers to the market. We all saw what happened over the last years. Uh, in the last five years, most markets in the U.S., property values have gone up dramatically, anywhere from 50 to 100%. I know here in California, property values almost doubled. I know in Texas, they went up a lot. I know in Florida, I actually own property there. The properties I bought there doubled in the last five years. So we really saw a big jump in, in prices. So now the big concern is now that interest rates have gone up, what's going to happen? 
Well, the surprising thing is that despite interest rates going up a lot, more than double, I mean, again, you went from a loan that was in the 2 to 3% range, today it's probably in the 6 to 7% range, we all expected values to go down in property because of the interest rates going up so much. But surprisingly enough, in most markets in the U.S., the property values have stayed up remarkably well. <laughs> I mean, here in L.A., they're actually up 7% from, this, from a year ago. I never would have predicted that. So what's going on? Why is it that the interest rates went up, but the property values have not dropped at all? Well, probably the biggest factor is the inventory. So if you look at the, the uh, amount of homes on the market for sale, today the inventory is a fraction of what it was two years ago. So why are people not putting their property in the market to sell, which is what the inventory is? Well, think about it for a minute. You went and bought a house, say, five years ago. You had maybe a 3.5% mortgage rate. You're thinking, okay, do I sell my property and take advantage of the high prices because that property went up a lot since I bought it? But the problem is I'm going to go buy another property to replace it, and I'm going to be paying 6.5% interest rate, which means it's almost double the mortgage payment of what I have today. So how many people out there are going to sell their property with that in mind? Unless you really have a compelling reason, like you need to downsize or you need to move out of state or something like that, um, or you have some big change in your life that, that forces you to sell your home, unless you have that, you're just not going to sell. I mean, I'm not going to sell. Why would I sell my property, which is, you know, worth a lot, actually, and then get a much bigger mortgage when I move? I, I just, I don't want to do that. In fact, I'm very happy where I am, and if I have to stay here another five or ten years, totally fine. So again, most people out there are thinking that, and so we're just not seeing the properties go on the market like, like we would have expected. It's really shrunk the number of sellers. And again, it's not just here in Los Angeles. We're seeing the same thing happening all across the country, whether it's Florida, Texas, the Midwest, whatever it is, uh, there just isn't a big inventory, and it's holding the prices up. So we're finding that if you put your property in the market, it sells if you price it right fairly quickly. Now, the other thing to think about is we went through an insanely hot market. So two, three years ago, we would list a property for a client and we would get multiple offers and quite often have that property in escrow in one or two weeks, sometimes quicker. <laughs> That's unusual. That's not a normal market. <laughs> a normal market, if you actually go back in time over the last 30 or 40 years, in a normal market, an agent lists a property and it takes three to six months to get it sold. That's normal long term. So we went through an unusually good period that we kind of got used to. In today's market, you're probably talking about anywhere from one to three months to list and sell a property, which really is not bad. That's actually pretty close to what it, what it normally has been over a long period of time. So again, if you, know, if you go to list your property and it takes several months to get the offer you want, that's okay. That's not so bad. That's normal. And again, if you price the property right, you're probably going to get the, the value you want out of that property. So it's kind of a unique scenario. Now, what's going to happen going forward? First of all, it's really, really hard to predict what's going to happen with the Federal Reserve because they're the guys that, that, that set the interest rates. So it's really up to those guys what we're going to pay on our mortgages. But what's kind of fascinating, though, is the Fed has a mandate that to keep in, um, inflation below 3%. So if inflation is at or greater than 3%, they're going to keep the interest rates high. So as long as we see inflation, which we are seeing it right now, that inflation rates have actually um, dropped over the last couple of years because they went very high, but it's still around 3%. In fact, the last, last report I just saw was about 3.4%. So they're not going to lower the rates uh, with that inflation. But Inflation is coming down, so there's a very high likelihood that by the end of this year, we are going to see interest rates go down. And when interest rates go down, we're going to see mortgage rates also go down with it. It makes it easier to buy, but we're going to see a lot of people jumping back in the market that we're holding out. So I'm dealing with a lot of investors right now. They're telling me, oh, Rusty, you know, I really don't want to buy right now. I'd rather buy when the interest rates go down. And also, they're thinking that, that the value of properties are going to go down. And I'm here to tell you that I don't think rate, the, the property values are going to drop. And one of the reasons is every 1% change in the interest rates adds or subtracts 5 million people as qualified buyers. 
by interest rates going up, every time the, it went up 1%, you just took 5 million buyers out of the, out of the market because they, they couldn't qualify to get a loan. So we've actually got fewer buyers today than we would have, say, one or two years ago. But what's going to happen when interest rates drop? We're going to get the opposite. For every 1% drop in interest rates, suddenly there's 5 million more buyers coming into the market. And that's really going to affect things a lot. So I don't think rates are going to go down uh, anytime really quick. But when they do go down, we're going to see a lot more buyers jumping in. And it's going to actually force the prices up even higher. So somebody who's telling me today, Rusty, I don't want to buy today. I want to wait. I want to get a lower mortgage rate. I think you're going to lose out. You're going to try and get that lower interest rate, but then you're going to pay more for the property. Because I think that when rates drop, you may see a 10 or 20% jump in property values. So you're going to give up whatever advantage you had buying that lower rate you know, by, by uh, losing out on the equity increase in the property. So I'm telling people, look, I think it's good to buy now. And the worst thing that happens is later, you're going to refinance that property at the lower rate, maybe in three or four years. So again, I don't think people should be sitting on the sidelines. I really think that all the, all the factors we've been talking about are holding prices up. All right, well, with that, we're actually going to take another break here. Again, it's Rusty Tweed. We're on the Real Men of Real Estate Radio Talk Show. Hang in there because we have some more fascinating things to talk about after this break. Tired of qualifying your leads and not getting the right clients for you? Join the finest women in real estate and learn how to attract the best clients and increase your referral network. Call now at 951-378-5316. 951-378-5316. Then become one of the finest women in real estate. This is Steve Matley. Join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio Talk Show. I spent decades as a professional construction manager, business owner, real estate developer, and a college educator, and I enjoy learning new things from other people. We talk a lot about real estate business and finance, but we cover a diverse range of other topics as well. Some of the topics we've discussed in the past few months include real estate investing, leadership, higher education, ADUs, marketing using technology, multifamily rental property, business strategy, entrepreneurship. You never know who may show up or what they may talk about. So join us right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio. Hey guys, it's Damon, Mr. Foxy, Damon Hart, and I'm here with the Real Men of Real Estate. And I just want to say, hey, come and watch us this Sunday, 1 p.m., live, every Sunday, okay? We're going to be on KCAA Radio, 1050 AM, 106.5 FM. If you got a minute, just tune in. We can't wait to have you here. I'm going to be there. If you can't make it on there, we're going to be at Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, or Android app on Building Solid Foundations channel. So tune in. But you know what you got to do in the meantime. Keep it foxy. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. FireUp Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including, inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. Welcome back everybody. This is Rusty Tweed and this is the Real Men of Real Estate Radio Talk Show. Now, we're going to be going into some other aspects about uh, the market today. Uh, as we just talked about, there's a lot of pressure that's holding prices up, and we're not seeing a drop. And I'm going to go over some of the other aspects of, of why prices are holding up. Now, probably the first thing to talk about is inflation. Now, I don't think I have to say a whole lot. Everybody gets it. Inflation has been amazing in a bad way. <laughs> I mean, everything's gone up in price. And so what's happened in the real estate market is the cost of building has gone up dramatically. It costs way more to hire people to do the work if you can find them. <laughs> and I know this personally because I'm in the middle of doing several renovations on properties that I own. 
and, and it's hard to find people to do the work in the first place. And then when you do find them to do the work, they're expensive, they're not cheap at all. And then on top of that, the cost of materials has gone up. Wood's gone up dramatically, uh, steel, um, appliances, you know, everything you're talking about has gone up in value, which means that uh, it's hard to, well, if prices, well, that basically holds prices up because people aren't gonna build or renovate unless they can get the price they want when they try to sell the property. So if it costs a lot of money to build, you're not gonna sell that property for less than what it costs to build and you have to make a profit. So if prices drop, then people just stop building or stop renovating and they sit on their property and that holds the prices up. And again, that, that's a big, big factor in what's gonna keep prices from dropping down the road because we don't see any, you know, we don't see prop or, uh, cost of goods dropping or, or um, wages dropping, you know, for workers. Uh, now the other thing is, who are the buyers of properties? Well, the biggest group of buyers are the millennials. Uh, believe it or not, 43% of all the buyers today, according to the National Association of Realtors, are millennials. Now, the millennial group is an interesting group because they're the children of what we call the baby boomers. Um, and we call the millennials actually echo boomers, right? <laughs> and we all know that the baby boomers created a huge, a huge push in uh, real estate, uh, because of the uh, because of the baby movers buying over uh, recent year or years earlier, it really pushed prices up and created a big boom in real estate. Well, guess what? The millennials, who are the baby boomers' children, is actually a larger group numerically than the baby boomers. Um, the millennial group is about 84 million people, which is a lot. And I can see it with my kids because they're all in that, that particular age group right now. They're in their late 20s, early 30s. And they're all hitting the age where A, they're getting married. B, they're having kids. We now have four grandkids. <laughs> and they're wanting to own a home. They don't want to sit in an apartment when they have a family. And I totally understand that. It's much more, well, I think we all ran through that with uh, COVID as well. Everybody kind of learned the hard way that, that if you were you know, sequestered in your home for months at a time, being in an apartment was not fun at all. And you figure, okay, if I'm gonna work at home and do things at home, I might as well be in a place that has a nice backyard and a nice neighborhood and you know a lot of things to do around there that I, I can uh, take advantage of if I'm gonna be at home. So the push to own a home has gone up quite a bit, uh, not just because of COVID, but also because of the millennials you know, having families. So that pressure is just really getting going. You know, There's a lot more uh, millennials that are still gonna have a family and so that's, that whole trend has just started. So it's putting a lot of pressure on the home market. So we don't see that letting up for many, many years, probably another 10 years. Um, now, the other thing on top of that, believe it or not, is institutional buyers. Now, this is something that most people aren't aware of, but after we had the crash in 2008, a lot of big institutional buyers um, discovered buying single-family homes because they dropped in value so much because of the uh, crash back in the, you know, after 2008, they got into buying them and that trend has actually grown. Now, when we talk about institutional buyers, who are we talking about? We're talking about groups like BlackRock. I know Zillow bought a lot of homes. Um, there's what they call Americans, American Homes for Rent. Um, there's large hedge funds. There's just a lot of groups out there that have a lot of cash and they've allocated tens and hundreds of millions of dollars towards buying single family homes. Now, why would they want to buy single family homes? Well, they're seeing all the different things that we're talking about. They're seeing that it's a good investment. They're getting a much better cash flow on those rental properties than they are buying uh, multifamily properties. For example, we're seeing the, a multifamily property, you know, 10 or 20 unit apartment building. Pretty much across the country right now, it's probably five or six percent for a good quality building. That um, if you went and bought a single family home, you can probably get an eight, sometimes nine percent cash flow uh, from the rents, which is much higher than you get dollar for dollar than investing in a multifamily home. And so if you went and bought, say, 20 single family homes versus a 20 unit apartment building, your, your cash flow is actually going to be better. Uh, and in addition to that, because of the factors we're talking about with the millennials, we think that there's much more upside as far as the appreciation in single family homes. 
Now again, this is gonna vary a little bit um, city to city in different parts of the country. Um, we're really focusing on markets in, uh, for example, Texas and Florida is where we actually do most of our transactions. And if you read any kind of study right now, and we're gonna talk about this a lot more in another segment, but Texas and Florida um, are the two fastest growing uh, states in the US. Uh, Florida being number one. And they're saying that Florida literally has about 2,000 people moving in a day. Now think about the amount of pressure for buying and renting property in, in a market like that. And so we, if we're gonna buy some property, let's buy it in a, in a state that we know is gonna be growing and continue to grow for a long time. Um, so again, you look at any of the statistics and you're gonna see that Florida and, and Texas are just off the charts as far as growth. Um, yeah, so there's that. But the, um, the amount of um, institutional buying, um, according to MetLife, they have their own analytical team, they're projecting that by the year 2030, 40% of all single family rentals are gonna be owned by institutions. That's a big number. So there's approximately 82 million single family homes in America right now. Out of that, about 17 million, which is a little over 20%, are rental properties. And out of that, they're saying 40% of that group of 17 million properties is gonna be owned by institutions. So that's a big number. We're talking about approximately 7 million homes being owned by BlackRock and other related large funds. And I'm seeing it, you know, um, over the years, we've, we've run into bidding wars on properties with uh, different groups in uh, Las Vegas, here in the Valley and in, in LA. We've seen them in Indianapolis. I know that a lot of homes were bought. We, we've done a lot of our own properties in, in Indianapolis, but we've seen a lot of competition from institutional groups in Indianapolis for whatever reason. And again, these guys are coming in and, and if, if they're a big percentage of all the uh, market and they got all this money, um, they're gonna push the market up or keep it up. So again, there's just so much pressure right now uh, to keep the market from dropping that we just, there's more upside, I think, going forward than there is downside. So again, you know, why are these institutional buyers buying? Well, they're seeing really good cash flow. They're seeing some good upside on, on the rents, um, which is another big factor. I mean, inflation across the board is causing rents to go up, and I'm sure you're hearing it. If you don't rent yourself, I'm sure you have friends or you have your own properties you're renting. And across the boards, everyone I'm talking to that has a rental property is saying, yeah, when, my, when one tenant leaves, it's really easy to raise the rents for the new tenant coming in. And again, I'm hearing that in Los Angeles, but I'm also hearing it in Houston, Dallas, Tampa, all these other markets. Uh, rents are noticeably going up. In fact, I'm really surprised. I, I have property in uh, Clearwater, Florida, which I think is a great market, but the rents there have gone up almost double over the last five years. Like their, their rents there in Clearwater right now today are almost comparable to property here in uh, Los Angeles when it comes to apartments, which I was surprised. Yeah, so it's very interesting to see what's going on. So uh, overall, again, there's just a shortage of inventory for the amount of buyers. And to build new property today is very expensive. So it's gonna, it's gonna keep, you know, the, uh, it's gonna keep them from building more than what we would like. like, like the building right now today, because of the cost to build, is just not keeping pace with, with the uh, amount of buyers out there and amount of renters. So any projection you look at all over the place says that we're gonna have a housing shortage for a bunch of years. And one other factor, which is kind of interesting, um, look at how many people we have moving into America. So all these immigrants, they're adding pressure on top of everything else. So Im immigrants may not be buying property, but they're certainly renters. And so again, that's putting pressure on the rental market and we're seeing it in a lot of markets as well. One, one great thing about America that's actually better than just about any other country in the world is we have a very healthy demographic growth where we have a lot of young people. Like I said, there's the millennials, uh, they're having kids and we have a lot of younger people coming in as immigrants and it's keeping our population very alive and very growing and very dynamic and again, if you compare that to other countries like China and Japan or even Europe, uh, far, far more dynamic uh, demographics here in America than just any other country that I know of in the world. And so that's really a great thing for real estate overall. So again, we're really not projecting any kind of drop. Um, everything is looking very, very healthy. And if anything, you know, investors today should be jumping in and buying, taking advantage of the prices today, because even though they're up, 
The pressure to push those prices up even higher over the next several years is, is very great. And we all know that, that long term, as long as you, and again, I've been through several crashes. I was through the, the savings and loans crisis back in the uh, early 90s, and then I was through the crisis in 2008. And there's one thing I learned both with my own properties and watching uh, investors that I worked with is as long as you can cover your expenses, we know that properties will recover. So for some reason, we did have a recession and property values did drop, which I don't see happening anytime soon. As long as you have enough rental income to cover your expenses, we all know that real estate's going to come out of it. There's never, ever been a drop in real estate that didn't recover. <laughs> it's just a fact. And so you just hang into that property, make sure you have good market where it's easy to rent or have good rental income, and you're gonna get through whatever happened. It won't, you won't even notice a recession, actually, if you have a good property and a good, a good rental market. And so um, that's really a big key to it. But again, we just don't see the, the prices dropping because of that. So um, it's time to take another break. So again, it's Rusty Tweed, Real Men of Real Estate Talk Show. And uh, we're gonna hear from our sponsor and then we're gonna go through another segment right after that. See you later. Tired of qualifying your leads and not getting the right clients for you? Join the finest women in real estate and learn how to attract the best clients and increase your referral network. Call now at 951-378-5316. 951-378-5316. Then become one of the finest women in real estate. This is Steve Matley. Join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio Talk Show. I spent decades as a professional construction manager, business owner, real estate developer, and a college educator, and I enjoy learning new things from other people. We talk a lot about real estate, business, and finance, but we cover a diverse range of other topics as well. Some of the topics we've discussed in the past few months include real estate investing, leadership, higher education, ADUs, marketing using technology, multifamily rental property, business strategy, entrepreneurship. You never know who may show up or what they may talk about. So join us right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio. Hey guys, it's Damon, Mr. Foxy, Damon Hart, and I'm here with the Real Men of Real Estate. And I just want to say, hey, come and watch us this Sunday, 1 p.m., live, every Sunday, okay? We're going to be on KCAA Radio. 10:50 a.m., 106.5 FM. If you got a minute, just tune in. We can't wait to have you here. I'm gonna be there. If you can't make it on there, we're gonna be at Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, or Android app on Building Solid Foundations channel. So tune in. But you know what you gotta do in the meantime. Keep it fast. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. FireUp Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including, inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. Welcome back everybody. This is Rusty Tweed, your host. And this is the Real Men of Real Estate Radio Talk Show. Today, we've been going over a bunch of interesting things having to do with interest rates and the pressure from millennials and, and institutions in holding up the prices of property. Now let's talk about what markets make sense to be in. And I've talked about it earlier about how a big part of my business is repositioning people's assets using the 1031 exchange process. Also, we just have investors that want to buy, you know, because they want to buy investment property. But what markets kind of make sense when you look at the big picture across America? The markets that, that we're working in specifically, and again, it's, it's a big country. There's all kinds of different areas that, that may be just as good, if not better, than the ones I'm going to talk about. But the ones that I feel strong about that I've done business in for many years are mainly Texas, Florida, and Indiana. Now, why Texas? Well, Texas is, is 
when you when you look at that, okay, and we're going to be talking about this a lot more in the next segment, you know, in the next show that we do. We talk about cap rates and cash flow, net cash flow in a property. So when you look at the property values in Texas, and then you look at the rents you're getting, the rents are much greater in relationship to the property value than you would get in, say, California. So a building in California, they get maybe 4% net cash flow on. That same property in, say, Houston or Dallas or some of these other markets would probably get you 6 7 or 8% cash flow. So, and the reason is that the relationship between the rent and the actual value of the building is much greater. And that gives you much higher cash flow, uh, more bang for your buck. And again, we're going to be doing a much deeper dive on how this works and how to calculate it in our next show. But for now, I just want people to understand that, again, you can actually sell a building in California and buy a similar building and increase your income by 50 to 100%. So that, that's a big deal. And then the other thing about Texas is it's, it's growing. It's uh, actually the second fastest growing state right now. A lot of people are moving there. I don't know about you folks, but I've got several friends that have moved to either Austin or, or Dallas, uh, quite a few friends actually. And there's a lot of companies moving to uh, Texas. If you go to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, that area now is the largest uh, area in the country for Fortune 500 companies. And, and the growth there has just been spectacular. I mean, I used to go to Dallas-Fort Worth 10, 12, 15 years ago, and you'd see all kinds of pockets of empty space, you know, five acres here, 20 acres there, uh, in between those two cities. They're gone. I go to Texas now, and there's, there's not much room left to build in between those two cities. It's all filled in, and it's been just an, an amazing amount of growth. And a lot of it is companies moving from California uh, to there. And so again, I'm sure all of you have friends or you know of somebody. I mean, yeah, there's just a lot of growth there of companies that have moved and, uh, and individuals. So we all know that, and, and that is not showing any signs of slowing up. So again, Texas, we think, is just a real strong state. When you look at the economy there, obviously they've got oil. They've got, they're the, probably the largest exporter of, of oil and petroleum products in the world, believe it or not. They're actually huge for, uh, in fact, the interesting statistic, I heard this the other day and I was kind of surprised. Texas has a larger economy than the country of Russia. That's how big it is. So there's a lot going on there. And a lot of it is not just oil and gas. They've got a lot of electronic company. Like I said, a lot of headquarters. I mean, it's just a, a lot of good stuff going on there. Now, what do we put our investors in when we talk about Texas? Well, we actually have some uh, groups there that have large portfolios of single family homes. And uh, they're mainly outside of Houston. And so we have access to this. These are homes that are in the val uh, price range of anywhere from 120 to $250,000. And they're gonna pay about an 8% cash flow based on the purchase price. And that's your net income on those. So we have access to those that are off market. So we do quite a few of those and we've been doing those for gosh, the last five years. Probably the thing we do the most of in Texas are manufactured homes. And the reason we do manufactured homes are they give us the biggest bang for our buck. You can buy a manufactured home for anywhere from 30 to $80,000 a unit and that unit's gonna pay about a 10%, sometimes 12 or 13% net cash flow. And there really isn't a lot of other properties you can do that with. The other thing is when you look at uh, long-term, manufactured homes tend to be kind of, not quite, as, they're the kind of in between a uh, apartment and a house. So if people are downsizing, uh, they're gonna downsize in Texas and it's more popular than here in California, but good chance they're going to downsize, they're going to go into a uh, manufactured home because they can get, you know, pretty much the same facilities as they would in a house. It's going to be a little smaller and they're going to have space around them and it's definitely going to be bigger and more spacious than if they bought or, or moved into an apartment building. I find that even in downturns in the economy, the manufactured home rental market actually holds up very, very well. So in our scenario, we actually have access to a whole portfolio of manufactured homes through uh, one of the largest owners of manufactured home parks. And so we routinely have investors buy them either as part of their 1031 exchange portfolio or they even buy them as part of just a straight investment. And you could do them through your IRA as well. Because again, I said the price points are anywhere from thirty dollars to $80,000 per unit. We have some people buy one unit. We have some people buy 10 units and 20 units. We have one client that has over 50 units. Again, they're going to be buying these basically because they get much, much higher cash flow than any other types of investment that we can offer. 
Now, the other markets we're going to be de- or that we do deal in is Indianapolis. Uh, we've been dealing it there for many years. We've probably done well over 150 homes there for our clients. So there we've been doing single family homes. Uh, that market's actually gone up quite a bit. But again, we have access to a portfolio of off-market homes that are all fully renovated. They're all rented up. We have a management company in place there that we work with. And so those have been, you can buy a property there from anywhere from one hundred and twenty dollars to $180,000 with a tenant in it. And it's got full management and it's going to pay about an 8% cash flow. So that's good. We, we actually like that market. It's very healthy. Indianapolis is uh, just kind of a steady, eddy, stable market where you don't see big jumps, but you don't see a lot of drops as well. And we've also done triple net lease properties and some uh, multifamily in those markets as well. The other market that we're starting to do more in is Florida. And uh, Florida, we're probably going to talk more about later, but it's the fastest growing state right now. Uh, rents are going up, a lot of movement from the Northeast down, uh, down into Florida. It's a red state, which is attracting a lot of attention as well. But it's just a great market there, and it's just growing like crazy. So we actually do a lot of similar stuff there as well. Okay, folks, we've pretty much run the gauntlet for today in the show. For more information, please call TFS Properties at 626-551-4326. That's TFS Properties, 626-551-4326. And also, please go on our website. Our website is tfsproperties.com. That's Tom Frank Sam Properties.com. And again, our phone number, 626-551-4326. And then again, we're going to be doing the show again. It's on Sundays at 1 p.m. And the next show, we're going to be focusing on cap rates and cash flow. So how to calculate it, how to get the most out of your cash flow, what parts of the market are the best places to be in, et cetera, et cetera. So it'll be a really good deep dive on cash flow. So again, thank you very much. We'll be talking to you later. Thank you. Southern California's Mind Spring. The legends you love and the best talk. KCAA Loma Linda. KCAA Loma Linda. KCAA Loma Linda. Tejibo Tea Club's original Pure Pouty Arco Super Tea helps build red corpuscles in the blood which carry oxygen to our organs and cells. Our organs and cells need oxygen to regenerate themselves. The immune system needs oxygen to develop and cancer dies in oxygen. So the tea is great for healthy people because it helps build the immune system and it can truly be miraculous for someone fighting a potentially life-threatening disease due to an infection, diabetes, or cancer. The tea is also organic and naturally caffeine-free. A one-pound package of tea is $49.95, which includes shipping. To order, please visit TeheboTeaClub.com. Tehebo is spelled T like Tom, A-H-E-E-B like boy, O, then continue with the word T and then the word club. The complete website is TehiboTeaClub.com or call us at 818-610-8088, Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. California time. That's 818-610-8088, TehiboTeaClub.com. With 60 years of fascinating facts, this is the man from yesterday. Back in time to this time in 1962, American U-2 pilot Francis Gary Powers is freed from a Soviet prison in exchange for the release of Soviet master spy Rudolf Abel. The two walked across the famed Bridge of Spies from East to West Germany from the opposite direction and at the precise moment. U-2 pilot Francis Gary Powers makes his first public appearance since he was exchanged for Soviet spy Rudolf Abel. Powers testifies before the Senate Armed Services Committee using a model of his plane. And from this time, late January of 1966, beginning this week, John Astin takes over the role as the Riddler on Batman, a role originated by Frank Gorshin. Riddle me this. What do you call a sleeping bull? Answer. A bulldozer. (laughs) And from this time in 1959, Felix the Cat, an old comic strip cartoon from earlier this decade, 
will be made for TV. Felix the cat, the wonderful, wonderful cat. Whenever he gets in a fix, he reaches into his bag of tricks. Felix the cat, the wonderful, wonderful cat. You laugh so much, your sides will ache, your heart will go pit a bad watch. And Felix the wonderful cat. With more at manfromyesterday.com. Southwestern Motors in San Bernardino thanks our troops and veterans for everything they've done so fearlessly for us. Send